actually knew him. Yeah. I mean, you didn't know him that's like this, but you could see who he was. So you knew him and that's why you're feeling it because he always, and you could see who he was when he's laughing on air is the same person he is when he's out there. You know, some people are different. Yes. But he's just him, he's you know. Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two sides. <laughs> there you go. He didn't have time or interest yeah. in two sides. You took it or you left it. You know, this is me, um, which was nice. Such which was nice. I, it's a loss, but I kind of feel we had the benefit of him for all that time. Mm -hmm. So I like to say the way you look at it is, wow, yes. we had him for those years, and so you celebrate that mm -hmm. rather than thinking he's gone, he's lost, because we are all going. All of us are going. There's nobody who's not that's going, right? <laughs> see, see, that's where we're going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. None of us are avoiding. There's, there's no way of avoiding. So we're going. You know, Bob was Bob. He was what you saw. You know, Bob was a highly intelligent, highly empathetic person. Um, he really felt a lot of things um, in terms of if he saw a need, he stood up and wanted to do something about it, which is a remarkable thing. As private sector leaders, we've seen very many who do what they do very well, but don't necessarily get into the, the fray and the thick of things, who do CSR or CSI. Um, but Bob kind of believed business is not just about doing good business, it's about doing good, and that's who he was. Um, at essence, he was brought up in Guyana by his grandparents in what was not a wealthy environment. So very much like the rural areas for many of us here in Africa, that's where he grew up. So I think in many ways that shaped his idea of, you know, you need to all pull together and do what you can, where you can for others. And that's the Bob that I saw, the Bob that I respected. You know, I love it. Bob was young at heart, right? And he was fun, he was quite cheeky, right? He, he, he loved a good laugh. Um, and that made him very relatable. And I think it's really important because we, um, we're not the same world we were before in Africa. We have a very young population. And so to be a leader, it's good to relate to people. Don't be too formal. Get people to walk with you. Even sometimes get them to walk ahead of you. Because leading is not necessarily about always being in control. Leading is about inspiring others to stand up and do something. And I think that's what Bob did. You know, and I really thought to myself when he was away, his team managed Safaricom flawlessly. And yes, he was engaged now and again, but it's not easy to take a big machine like that. And when the leader is away recuperating, do the job that they did. And I think that's a testament to the fact that he really prepared them or allowed his team to really be empowered and chose strong people. So good style of leadership, a fun style of leadership, but a very focused one as well. I agree. And when you put competent people in place, you're not too worried about things. Your team works with you. And I think he had a lot of confidence in the people who are in place. And that's a really important thing. So the one thing we'll never forget about Bob is Bob said what he thought unfiltered. <laughs> And that, you know, I mean, sometimes people are like, he doesn't like Ugali. It doesn't matter. He doesn't have to like it, right? You may not like chips and that's okay too, you know? But sometimes Kenyans would go, oh my goodness, you know, he just said that. But he was just authentic, you know? He just said what he thought. And, uh, and maybe that's the, one of the things we love the most about him, right? Yeah. So I, I really want to talk about Kenyans for Kenya because some people don't understand just how important he was to that drive and to literally saving the lives of, of uh, many people in the Horn of Africa who were dying. You know, we, we went to the ground in, in Turkana and it was shocking. People were one, two days away from death. We all went with him and Red Cross, and he was a big part of marshalling the media and saying, listen, guys, let's all go up there and see what these guys are talking about. Red Cross say there's a, there's, you know, there's a crisis. Government was saying there's no crisis, you know? Um, so we went and we saw, and it was horrifying. And we rallied and people heard. And this CEO who had just come into Kenya recently all of a sudden became a pivotal leader in bringing number one private sector together and drawing them in to help, um, helping empower Kenya Red Cross Society, bringing the media. It was a really important role that Safaricom played and Bob himself led that, that drive. A couple of years later, we went to Kaikor, which was the epicenter of the drought. 
I held a fat baby in my hands and we were in um, this incredible, sh uh, what, what are they called? Um, uh, greenhouses. So there were these greenhouses that had been put in place. Tomatoes, cabbage, watermelon, the fattest watermelon. So people were eating, they were growing their food, there was water there, and all of a sudden, can I tell you something else? Animals had started coming into Kaikor <laughs> because the water was there. So you just see a totally transformed place. And you look at these leaders and you say, wow, Bob Collymore played a big role in saving lives, you know, transforming communities. And sometimes we forget and um, it doesn't matter that much to us, but to those people, that was life and death. So I will always remember Bob for that. But I, always will, I, I also will remember Bob for his interest in the youth. In Africa, we talk a lot about the youth as if they're uh, peripheral. The youth are not peripheral, they now are the majority. And so in recognizing that and setting up platforms for the youth within Safaricom, Bob was saying, hold on a minute, they, we need to cater to their world. Their world is real and it is slightly different from ours. And so let's make sure we have services and platforms that work for them. Um, at community level, if you look at the work they've done from Shofko, uh, Kennedy Odede, and who then they were friends, to many other projects, getting kids familiar with computers and education programs and much more, he had a passion for transformation. I think he knew uh, young people would be the heart of transformation. So that is, it was amazing and it was inspirational. Wow, like so many. Bob inspired me. So before we even go to lessons, Bob kind of... Uh, made me understand no matter how hard, because you can look at someone like Bob and see where he is today, but it was an incredible journey to get where he was. So it, it was inspirational. To know that no matter how life gets, you can always have a laugh, right? There's always a perspective that, you know, you can sit down and, you know, you may be fighting cancer, you may be struggling to, to, to get to the office, you may be worried about, you know, certain things here and there, but you can always be jovial about it and look forward, right? Um, but for me, I think what I take from Bob the most is just his realness and his authenticity. And we can be authentic, live a good, great life, live our great life. And, um, and I'm happy for him that he had that. So as we, even as we mourn, even as we mourn that we've lost Bob, I think he lived a great life and he lived his best life. And that for me is a wonderful thing. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just remember one time we were on a flight together going to the World Economic Forum in Cape Town. And we were seated um, next to each other and right in the front of the plane. And he took his shoes off and put his legs on the, on the wall of the, of the plane, what, the panel. And his socks were like multicolored. And, you know, I remember looking at him like, Okay, that's the, that's the craziest combination of socks. And so Bob loved his socks. So if you go looking at footage, kind of just try and see what socks is he wearing. He had the, he had the most amazing socks. So that for me was really funny, sitting and looking at his socks and saying, really? You know, um, he was a great guy. And uh, may he rest in peace.